I'm here with uh, my good friend Tim Liptak from Charleston, South Carolina. Tim's a prominent beekeeper in Charleston, and uh, um, I wanted to talk to him about his concoction here. He, he purchased this bottom board from us a while back, and then he brought it back and had us put this 71 millimeter hole in there. We use the same uh, hole saw that we use for putting holes in migratory lids for feeding. And I saw a picture, he sent me a picture of the results, and I really wanted him to uh, describe this and explain it so I could put it on a video because I think this thing shows great promise. So yeah. I'll just shut up and I'll let you explain this thing to us. Well, where we live, uh, small hive beetles are a big issue. Um, and we're, we're always looking for avenues to uh, combat the pest. So I use this as part of my integrated pest management program for small hive beetles. So it's another tool in the toolbox to uh, mitigate uh, the uh, small hive beetle. Um, <clears throat> I'm currently in a master's program at the University of Florida and one of the uh, rites of passages of a master's student in entomology is to uh, put together an insect collection. So we're always looking for ways to collect insects and one of the ways is uh, to use what we call a pitfall trap which is a jar that <clears throat> we uh, can bury in the ground after it's baited and it will trap um, insects for us to collect and examine. So it got me to thinking that this may be a uh, the perfect way to uh, corral and capture small hive beetles that were gathering on the uh, solid bottom board in my hive. So essentially what we did was uh, we drilled the hole <clears throat> in the solid bottom board and uh, um, we took a cap and we drilled holes in the cap. So what, what size drill bit did you use? Uh, 5 32nd. 5 32nd, yeah. okay. Yeah. Um, I put six holes in this cap and it seemed to do uh, work just fine. Um, I'm still tinkering around with the configuration of it, but I find that the size of this hole is adequate to trap the small hive beetle. And so if you want, basically the beetles can get in there and the bees can't. Yeah, so they have trouble them. navigating this rounded top. Um, if you really want to keep them from climbing back into the hive, you can put a, a, a bead of Vaseline around the top here and that will keep them from climbing back out. And to bait this, I use a simple bait like we use in beetle traps or beetle blaster traps. Um, I bait it with uh, uh, apple cider vinegar and uh, some mineral oil. And I usually fill it up about a third of the way. So what, what's the concentration, um, like how much apple cider vinegar to how much oil? I fill it about a third of the way with oil and um, I put about a teaspoon of uh, apple cider vinegar in that. Um, Any oil? I like to use mineral oil. Mineral I oil. find that vegetable oil um, becomes rancid after a while. Oh, yeah. I have used diatomaceous earth in these um, with great success. Um, you can also bait them with a piece of pollen uh, patty. Um, so, uh, you know, try your baits out and uh, see what works for you. You mentioned you put beeswax around the cap to kind of make it stick in yes. that hole. Yeah. And, um, and does that keep it in? And I guess the bees themselves would kind of stick it eventually. Absolutely. Huh? So, you know, you can glue the lid into the hole, but I like things that are removable so I can pull let's, them let's, out. Let's stick it in there. And um, I put a little bit of uh, beeswax around the outside, and I just kind of press it in to the hole here, and it captures it. The bees will um, propolize the outer edge of it. Yeah. Interesting. So uh, you've got one hole. Do you think is, would two holes be better or is it just overkill? I don't know. I haven't tried out multiple. Um, this was kind of a pilot for me uh -huh. um, where I was testing out one to see if it worked. So without damaging my well, bottom well, boards. You got a bunch of beetles <clears throat> in that 
thing, the picture I saw. Yeah, the pictures I sent you will show you the beetles, um, the bees actually pushing the beetles towards the edges of the bottom board. And then the beetles try to escape the bees by um, entering these holes here. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. It's uh, too simple, Tim. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty simple. <laughs>
times. Yeah. So full sun is best, I guess. I definitely agree with that. Um, and that's definitely a, 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 a something to consider. Um, I find a lot of beginner beekeepers, especially, are chomping at the bit to set up their colonies and their hives in the, um, their first year. And they don't really look into the ideal place to place their, uh, uh, to, to put their colonies. So full sun, uh, morning sun's great. Um, yeah. So, you know, there's, uh, there's, there's definitely various ways to uh, um, take care of these pests. So you don't use any chemicals? You don't drench the soil or anything around I've your considered it. I'm trying to uh, steer away from hard chemicals in my apiaries, yeah, and I'm that includes that. Um, uh, mite treatments as well. Yeah. Well, um, yeah, they're a pest. I'm so glad we don't have the issue here in the mountains that you do. Yeah, we I have, to... yeah, our, our, our climate and the geography really is conducive for small hive beetle outbreaks, but. Well, Charleston is built on a marsh. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's surprisingly moist. The Very. soil is just marshy, moist soil. Yeah. Right in town, I'm, I'm surprised. Yeah, and I see some beekeepers, you know, they're mulching around their hives and things like that. And, you know, one of the, one of the things I can't stress enough is to learn the biology of your pest. Yeah. Um, if you know where it lives the best and where it flourishes, uh, you're really going to be able to mitigate the pest a lot better than if you're ignorant of that. So you mentioned mulch, don't mulch. I like the way it looks, but <laughs> it's not great for an apiary. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I've seen people go to extremes where they're laying down landscape fabric and um, black horse mats, and that'll take care of some of the larvae that are trying to pupate in the ground, but they're very, very industrious, tough little creatures, and um, they travel a long way to pupate. Um, I heard Jamie Ellis, uh, who I mentioned earlier, talk about um, uh, he was doing some experiments on small high beetles in a second floor laboratory, and he actually found small high beetle larvae down, going out the front door on the first floor of the laboratory. So it shows you that uh, where there's a will, there's a way. But um, yeah. yeah, it's just another little trick and pearl that you might want to try out. And um, I'd love to hear your comments and yeah. if it works for you. Um, yeah, we should, uh, uh, we should ask people to comment in the video if they have any good ideas. Sometimes the comments in a video are just as educational or more than the yeah. video itself. Yeah, and it, yeah. Um, you know, before we uh, end here, I just wanted you to know that I'm using a plastic cup. Um, it's a little bit more lightweight. I was trying a mason jar in the beginning, but it was a little too heavy, and this is uh, made of plastic. It's actually a medical specimen jar. You can get them on Amazon. So, um, it, uh, but it, it, it does a nice job, and it's pretty lightweight. But yeah, um, you can sense. buy them by the dozen for, I think like 20 bucks or something like so that. So medical, plastic, sample and, jar. And then you can use anything that would accommodate this lid, which yeah. gives you a lot of flexibility. That's a standard mayonnaise jar lid. 70, some people call them 70G, 70MM. Uh, pretty, pretty standard. That's what we use on our honey jars when we want a metal lid on our quart jar. And if you're done using the trap and you want to seal up the hole, just use a um, just, a, just a lid. Yeah. A lid and throw it in there and there you do. go. That's what we do in our migratory covers, mm -hmm. yeah. All right, well, uh, thank you, Tim. Appreciate that. Yeah. I'll try to get that video out in the next few weeks. Awesome. Uh, hive beetle time is upon us. I mean, they get worse all summer and now they're starting to get kind of peak-ish. Yeah, I, I, a lot of that has to do, like I said or mentioned earlier, about uh, space and you know we've in Charleston have been going through a dearth so the brood nest is contracting the bees are leaving a lot of space unattended yeah. and um, that's a key word so if you have a lot of open space that isn't being policed and uh, uh, you're you're going to have problems with small hive beetles yeah makes sense all right thanks yeah thank you